All right, what's up, people? This is Sifurian, and right now we're going to be checking out episode nine of season five of Vikings. And whole oh, shit, <laughs> is it me, or has this gone by way too quick? It feels like it's just flew by to me. Like honestly, it feels like it was just the other week. Just the other week, we were watching Ivor screaming at a bunch of Englishmen like, "You can't kill me! I'm Ivor the Polis." <laughs> And now we're already on episode 9. It's like, really? <sighs> Man. Okay, I'm not going to do much of a recap because we already kind of know where we are. But there is one or two points that I kind of want to bring up quick. First off, Ivor. I want to know why he pulled his forces out and then kind of hang back just to kind of see what was going to happen. You know what I mean? He wanted to see if he was right. Right about what? Because as far as I'm concerned, that kind of went over my head. You know, I, I don't know why he did that. I've been trying to think why. It's it's like, okay, so if if he's got his own agenda of overthrowing King Finehair one day, then why, why weaken his defences now while he still has this agenda of killing Lagatha? You know what I mean? It makes no sense. Maybe he was just testing... Bjorn and, and Lagatha seeing what tactics they were going to use. As far as uh, in Iceland with Floki, that girl, um, the one who keeps like defending Floki, I'm really bad with names, I'm sorry. She's actually Edgy's daughter because I said last week like I weren't too sure if she was his sister or wife or whatnot. Uh, but it is actually his daughter because it's, it's actually said in, in the last episode. Um over my head uh <laughs> i think now like the the possibility of her being a bit of a love interest for floki is a little bit more likely but it all kind of depends on floki and like would he be willing to embrace somebody after halga because how like, like, like halga was his love you know what i mean he's his one and only true love and a part of him died with her so it all depends on floki like would he be willing to embrace that now I think right now, Floki's not really interested in it. I think he's just focused on um, worshipping the gods and, and doing right by the land and, 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 and the people. I don't think Floki's really interested in just getting his leg over. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you never know, so I thought I should just kind of put it out there. If it is going to become something, I could kind of see it growing in Season 5B. Um... I don't know, but as far as the other guy, um, I can't think of his name, but he's going to be an issue, he's going to be a problem, like I said last week, I think he's, he's just generally just trying to cause shit amongst all the people, so they'll just start to get to a point where they're like, yeah, you know what, you're right, Floki has led us down the wrong path, we are going to die here, why the hell are we following Floki? We should follow you. We'll call you king. <laughs> I think that's his plan. He wants to become king. I think that's his like main agenda. You know, um, I said it last week. I think I said it the week before. Yeah, I think, I think he's got his own agenda. Because, um, like I said last time, he could very easily just go back. Rebuild bridges with Lagatha and everyone and just go back why is he staying there and last but not least the whole situation with bishop heckman and lagatha because like i said last time right the whole thing where it's like the all the, all the noise went muffled and he just kind of just locked on her like that little romantic moment they're, they're so gonna hook up <laughs> they're so gonna hook up okay Look at Bishop Heckman as a character. This is a guy who has, like all men, a weakness for women. You know what I mean? As far as him, he feels like he's sinning. You know, that's why he, he had that whole scene of him running through the bushes or being scratched up, praying to God, asking him to, like, forgive him for sleeping with that woman and, and everything. You know what I mean? He thinks he's living in sin when, when he does stuff like that, you know? But now he's around Vikings. He's, he's, he's around people who, I guess you could say, are very open to, the, to, to sharing your bed with someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think the more time Bishop Heckman spends with the Vikings, the more he will adjust to that way of life. You know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to happen with Ivor, like, like, because he's, like, a good warrior and, and 
He believes in honor the same way that Vikings do type of thing. But the temptation, man, they kind of set that up. I didn't even think about that, man. I really didn't even think about that. It's going to be kind of interesting to see Lagatha and Heckman kind of become something. But anyway, we're going to get into this. This is episode nine. Whew, gone by so quick. This is called A Simple Story. Let's do this, man. The aftermath of the battle. Shed loads of people looking for loved ones, aren't there? Looking for fathers and husbands and brothers and sons, daughters and mothers. Because it's, it's not just men, is it? Oh wow, just hacking up his arm. <laughs> Do you love men and women just the same? I'm not our Lord. Agape is. Too hard for me. I love women. We have no problems loving the spirit and the flesh. Our gods encourage it. Then you have no guilt, no remorse. What was I saying? No. I envy you. I have spent many years of my life living sinfully. What was I saying? Talking about sin and, and <sighs> flesh. <laughs> I remember Uncle Rolla once told me on his ship on our way back from the Mediterranean. He said that if I ever needed his support, all I had to do was ask. What do you think? Do you want the French to help us? No. I think you ought to leave at first light tomorrow. Is this how Rolo comes back to Katakat? Is this how he comes back? Oh my God, no way. No way. But then why, why would he fight on either side? Like, if anything, I could see him siding with Bjorn and Lagatha because that's who he's got real, like, real history with. You know what I mean? You told him that if he did not like it here, he could always go back home. And he said that we had burned all our bridges and can never return home again. But that's not true. He could always sail home. What really is to stop him? Nothing. No. He wants to stay because he wants to be king of it. He could never be king in Kattegat. But here, an uninhabited land, a new world, harsh or not, he could be king of it all. Wow. But first, he has to undermine your authority. He has to turn people against you. That's what he's been trying to do. Can you not see? I have watched David from the start. And the truth is, he's trying to provoke a reaction. He wants us all to fall into violence and chaos from which he can rise to power. Uh -huh. We mustn't give him that satisfaction. We must remain calm. What did I say though? This is getting a bit eerie sometimes, how right I am. I've been saying it now for a while that I think he's going to try and be king. <laughs> it's getting a bit freaky, man. Say that again. Do yourself a favor, Paul. Step back. See, this is what he wants, man. See, that, that just that look on his face. Problem. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to cause so much shit. Someone's going to die. And I think it might be... Oh, I hope it's not her. I hope it's not her. But I think Edge's son might die. Or maybe he's... His girlfriend because she's pregnant, right? While he's wife. Or something, right? Something's going to happen there. There's so many. Many ships. 
too many to count. Is that Rolo? Why would Rolo send soldiers to fight for Vitzuk and Ivan? I don't know. Maybe he is there. Maybe I could go talk to him. I'll go alone. Maybe yeah. we can negotiate some sort of agreement. Perhaps King Harold and Rolo will see Sam. I wouldn't count on it. Is Rolo there? Or is it just his forces? They are in a position of strength now. Fisherman's friend. They're fishermen. They're the fisherman's friend. <laughs> Rolo's army. <laughs> you get it? Okay. He only asked for one thing. And what was that? That we spare parents' life. Perhaps we will. Perhaps we will. Oh, man. I cannot believe Rolo was sent forces to help. Odin's son, Odin's god son. of farmers, the god who fished out and fought the world's serpent. That's the uh, music for the Blood Eagle, right? Oh, here we go, here's trouble. Give me the blood. Alright. <laughs> the way he was holding the ball. Come on, Floki, this is what he wants. Someone's gonna end up dying though. Someone's gonna kill someone. <laughs> what did you wanna talk to me about? Everything. The gods, life and death, my soul, the hanged man, despair, hope. Eternal life. It's not much then, yeah. You don't have to fight for us. <laughs> of course I do. That's why you saved my life. Wow, okay. You hoped that I would take up my sword and fight for you against Ifa. Well, you? I will fight for you. I will die for you. Okay. Even though you don't know me. Oh, I know you. I've known you. My whole life. Wow, okay. You really want to sin again? Oh, they are so going to get it on. They're so going to get it on. <laughs> Why is she having visions? Or is that what she assumed is happening? My advice to you is to forget about your mother. Don't think of her. Don't imagine she's ever coming back. Bitch. Except as a ghost. Oh, I really hope she dies slow and painful. I really, really do. <laughs> oh. For the sake of our father, for the sake of our father's legacy and everything he believed in, I am asking you, Ivar, do not put our people's lives at risk. The only reason why you're saying this is because you see all the might gathering against you. This changes nothing. What? What is this? You know, as well as I do, that this is not our way. It's not our way. It's worth a try. Wow. 
over. <laughs> the tension between them all, though, is so good. That great heathen army has proved to be just the precursor of more attacks. Now their raiding parties, their fleets, their armies come from everywhere. They attack Scotland and Ireland with impunity, and they attack us. Like stinging hornets swarming from north to south, east to west. They are now a threat to every English kingdom. Once, they would sting us and quickly leave again, but now they stay. We will discuss the best ways of dealing with this threat. We must make plans. Just talking about being stung and how you've been stung. <laughs> What's he allergic or something? All our sins are washed away in the blood of Christ. Are you kidding me? Love one another. Do what is best for Wessex, my son. <laughs> what? Wow. So after all the battles he's been in, he becomes king, a great warrior, and it's a, it's a bee sting. Really? Is that actually how he really died? You have a care for your mother. <laughs> Listen to her. She's wiser than both of you. <laughs> Don't weep for me. The angels are already here. Can't you see them? Can't you see that? No way. What? <laughs> A beast They won't make a deal. We, we, we we'll stick fight. a fork in that until it's finished. We have to fight. What? In the end, we are all fighting for my father's legacy. We've all believed in it. And we've all come to understand how a young farmer from Norway risked his life to explore the world so that our people could farm. That was his life's purpose. That was his life's ambition. If Ivar wins, Ragnar's dreams are lost. Let us prepare. The gods have already decided the outcome of this battle. The Witten will reconvene tomorrow. Who's going to be king? They must now? select a new king. You will refuse the crown. What? But why on earth should I? You said yourself that my father had prepared me. Yes. Yes, Ethelred. He has prepared you to be a king in his own image. Oh, a warrior king. But these times demand a different kind of ruler. Your grandfather made that very plain. What could Eckbert know of these times? <sighs> Brother. Don't you speak! On the contrary, he must speak. Whatever the circumstances of his birth, Eckbert saw in Alfred the future ruler of the country he was creating. It wasn't you. Wow. Edward saw in Alfred gifts, abilities you didn't have. He equipped him to be the future king. Wow, what a setup. We now have two more brothers who have a bit of a rivalry. But they will still ask me to be king. Yes. 
I'm certain they will. Well then. He's not going to say no, is he? Got Ragnar's sons at odds. King Finehair and Halfdan at odds. And now Athelwolf's sons. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. I don't know, like, the actual history. I don't know who actually... Well, how Alfred, like, becomes king. I don't know. <laughs> My friend Steve would know, like, he's really big onto, like, English history, but... We still don't know the cause of his death. It was so sudden, so calamitous. But now, we must choose a new king. And I have no hesitation in nominating the king's eldest son, Prince Aethelred. Wow. May he be anointed as our new ruler. He actually stayed faithful. To be your king will be the greatest honor of my life. Even in these times of great danger. <laughs> Unfortunately, I must decline the honor. I am not fit to be your king. Really? I think we must offer it to his younger son, Prince Alfred. <laughs> all those in favor. Lord. Silence, my lords, please. Silence. In the name of my father, King Aetherwolf, and my grandfather, King Eckbert, I do nominate my brother Alfred to be king. All those who agree say aye. Wow. Aye. 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 See, you see it in his face, he's not happy. He's not happy. <laughs> there is a fire! A fire! Come quickly! A fire at the temple! All of you, quickly! Oh, no. The temple is on fire! Wow, this is actually really powerful, man. What the fuck? Bull the dog, you did this. Long live the king. 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 Long. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Ooh. Said it, then I someone would die. I feel for Floki, man. That's not what he wanted. The fuck? And it fucking. Okay. That look then by Alpha's brother. That look. I just got. I just got this sinking feeling. Like, okay, you're king. But when you die, I'll become king. You know what I mean? <laughs> brother against brother, like... Oh, man, is he going to try and set up Alfred in some way? Is he going to try and kill Alfred? That look just said it all. And Judith looking at him as well, like, she, she knows. She knows. <laughs> oh, man. That was really emotional, like... Athelstan's baby boy is now king. Like... Right? Athelwolf, right? Is that how he really historically died? By a bee sting. But then, then he did say, like, we don't know the causes of his death. 
just somebody please comment down below like how did he actually really die or is it still unknown because to die by a bee sting kind of ironic how he was talking about like, like, like the heathen army were like hornets coming in and, and stinging as they please and then he ends up being stung like only thing i can really think of because it could be like something very very simple like one he's just generally allergic you know and he's never been stung before of course like nowadays people are allergic to bee stings they do swell up as long as they get the right like medication and stuff they're fine but back then they didn't have the medication you know what I mean? <laughs> so of course people would die so it could be just as simple as he was allergic or it could be the only thing i'm really thinking of is with the vikings coming over on a regular basis like they were saying that that they keep attacking england they're attacking scotland ireland and stuff so there's these these foreigners if you will are coming over they're bringing their own food stock live animals and god knows what else like could that be it you know what i mean because that's like why why we have like customs now like you got to check in everything everything has to be checked like you're going over the certain countries and stuff i don't know i don't know but i i find it really interesting and weird really weird why why <laughs> a bee sting really after all the battles that he's been in all the, like the epic fights and everything like oh man i actually got kind of choked up on that like really i was starting to really like his character as well because up to now he's always just been kind of like egbert's son sidekick type of thing but with this season he was starting to kind of come into his own character and take the reins like become king and then get took out quick like oh that's really sad that is <laughs> oh man okay very very quick right i'm I need to kind of bring this up because it's starting to get a little bit freaky. Okay, every time I do reaction videos to stuff, I go into this stuff blind. Okay, it doesn't matter if, if it's a brand new episode once a week or it's a show that's been aired now for a couple of years, it's finished and I'm playing catch up. Regardless, I go into this blind. You know what I mean? I know no spoilers. I've, I've intentionally kept my, like, I kept away from stuff. I could very easily Google shit. You know what I mean? But I choose not to. Because I don't see the point in knowing spoilers. I, I, I would rather just go into it blind and just take it as it comes. You know what I mean? And sometimes I am right with my predictions and sometimes I am wrong. But when I am right, um, sometimes I get this feeling like, oh, people's just going to like accuse me of bullshitting and I'm lying. And, and I, I already know what's going to happen. But with shows like this, like brand new episodes once a week, I love it. I love it when I make some kind of prediction. And I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, you know. But I love it when I say, like, oh, I think this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And then, like, next week or the following week, it actually happens. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I get more hyped up for this than, than, than say, if I predict something on Black Sails and, and, and then two, three episodes later, it actually happens. It's like, yeah, great. I'm, I'm right on that. But then I also get that sinking feeling like, oh, someone in the comments going to be like, oh, you knew that was going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's just starting to get a little bit freaky with this show, man. But that one guy in, in like, Floki's village, it was just so obvious. It was completely blatant that, that he was trying to intentionally cause issues and problems because he's got his own agenda. You know, even though... Even though the character hasn't directly come out and said, you should follow me, I should be the king. The fact that it's even been said, you know what I mean? The fact that Edge said it, like he wants to be king. You know, he's trying to cause issues and shit, you know? It's like, I was saying that last week and the week before. I'm pretty sure it was the other week as well. Oh, man. And then Lagatha and Bishop Heckman. Um, see, like that, that whole concept of of Bishop Heckman having a weakness for women and then Vikings have been very open about 
sleeping and you know sleeping arrangements <laughs> like i think i said it on like episode one or was it episode two i said something about how like bishop heckman and lagatha might um are meant to be working together or something like that it's been playing on my mind like could they hook up could he be like a nude love interest because lagatha lagatha has said several times now like to the point where it's like becoming a bit repetitive about how she can't trust someone she's constantly being betrayed by men and women the only like one that she can trust 100 percent right now is beyond her own son you know what i mean but like how funny would it be if if the only other person that she can trust is bishop heckman you know what i mean and they have because okay I said about how I think we might get like a mirrored like friendship, what we had with Athelstan and Ragnar. What if we have that with Ivor and Bishop Heckman? But what if we flip that a little bit and it's Bishop Heckman and Lagatha? They have that bond. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm spitboarding ideas again, but the whole concept of he's got this weakness for women and now he's like surrounded by these people who are very open about their sexuality and stuff and it's like if you're going to be around these people and and be very open about it who who like like, like who's better to sleep with than the queen you know what I mean lagatha like out of all the women in kattegat lagatha's got to be the one at the top you know what I mean the start middle and end of all temptation you know what I mean <laughs> And like I said, I think it'll be funny if if it turns out that that he'll be the only one that she can truly trust. Because just from the standpoint of Bishop Heckman, like yes, he had a a a certain line of loyalty to Ivor. That was through warrior type of respect. You know what I mean? But through this, this is heckman's own temptation of a beautiful woman i mean i think all men can kind of fall victim to that um <laughs> but there's also the fact that she saved his life you know what i mean so he owes her that as well so he's gonna have more loyalty to lagatha so his life is in her hands so he's gonna be loyal to her same way with half dan bjorn saved his life so his loyalty is in bjorn you know what i mean his life is in bjorn's hands See, like I said, I understand how Michael Hurst sets up his writing now, you know what I mean? Like, if you look at the brothers, each of them has got, like, a specific reason why they're falling out with the other. You know, Howard Finehair and Halfdan. Uber and Fitzek. Ivor and Bjorn. And now, Alfred and his brother. Well, I can't think of his name at the moment. It's, it's that same kind of format of writing to have all these people at odds. The same way um, the loyalty thing, like Lagatha has saved Bishop Heckman's life, Uber saved Half Dan's life, so their loyalty isn't. Like, like, you see what I'm saying? As far as Uber's wife, though, Margaret, or whatever her name is, I don't care. I hope she's dead soon. Uh, <laughs> that sounds so bad. I really, really hope she don't do anything to the kids those are Bjorn's kids like if she does do something if she really does do something to those kids I don't know I'm trying to think like who who could be the one to kill her like the most logical one would be Lagatha especially if she does something to Bjorn's kids because those are Lagatha's grandchildren you know what I mean so it would make sense for Lagatha to be the one to kill her because of all the issues that they've had in the past with her talking behind lagatha's back and everything but let's not forget ivor ivor's got a problem with her too because she ran her mouth off about how how he wasn't man enough to satisfy a woman you know what i mean they're the only two that i think would actually make me smile to see them kill her <laughs> i think it will be lagatha i hope it will be lagatha nice and slow painful death season finale maybe yeah so I'm going to end this and, and try and get this edited and up for you guys ASAP. I could sit here for another half an hour rambling and then spend more time editing. <laughs> but yeah, there's loads we could talk about, but 
I'm just going to end this right now. I'll try and get this edited. So for now, give this video a thumb up if you like it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't already, man. All right? I've been Sif Urian. I'll catch you in the next one, man.